Nice, Ryan. I sneezed. Oh, I'm not allowed to sneeze. G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be having a look at what I believe quite firmly is the single best plane tier for tier in the game. This is the uh, F8U2 Crusader. This is one of the earlier Crusaders and I have had a look at this plane a couple of times. This plane, honestly, it blows me away and for more than a couple of reasons. Apart from the wings being fragile as all hell and it not having any flares or RWR, this plane is... Uh, pretty damn good. It's it's jam-packed with a lot of things, and since it was uh, given the AIM-9Ds, this plane is even better. Not only does this thing have phenomenal performance, it sits at a battle rating where it can actually see a fair few down tiers because of the uh, sort of a 9.3 Harrier spam, if you will. The AV-8As and the Yak-38s are fairly prominent, as well as, of course, the MiG-19s, 21s, and, of course, the uh, Lightnings, Hunters. Beautiful sort of swath of uh, planes at this sort of battle rating for the F8U2 to feast on. This plane is, uh, in my opinion, one of the harder ones to learn, but once you get used to the wings, it's pretty much a done deal. This plane has some very, very solid performance uh, bonuses over its enemies. It's got great uh, acceleration, it has a fantastic climb rate because of that acceleration, and of course, it has fantastic energy retention in a straight line. This plane also, because of its acceleration, is very, very good in a dogfight. You can energy fight and uh, turn fight sort of at the flip of a switch. It's quite impressive. It also has some fairly decent flaps, and of course, below 600 kilometers per hour, you can uh, pretty much outturn almost anything. The only thing I wouldn't recommend doing is like flat turning a MiG-21 or flat turning uh, a Draken or something like that. I, I probably wouldn't go as far to turn fight a, a Draken, but maybe a Mirage 3E you could definitely pull it off with. So what I'm doing here, this is a full down tier, so I pretty much have free reign on the battlefield. This is one of those matches that just sort of ends very, very quickly, uh, and just the 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 Crusader just is able to be there and just put itself in the right situation. And for for a plane to be able to do that, it is extremely impressive. These types of planes are sort of few and far between, uh, and the only planes that really have that have some crazy acceleration, really, really good weapon systems like uh, missiles or really good guns. Uh, and some decent turning capabilities, and of course, the Crusader has all three of these. This is also to be uh, sort of keeping in mind, this is one of the early Crusaders. So this is a 10.3 sitting in a sort of earlier era, and we could potentially get things like the F8E and the F8E for France, I believe has March of Magics. So I'm not sure if it has four of them, but if it does, it will easily be the best French plane because... Uh, the Mirage 3E is kind of kind of crap, let's be honest. So, first victim here is the Hunter. We're going to have a look at him with a missile, but of course there's a Harrier right behind the AV-8 that is sitting up high, and uh, that is going to be sort of prime target. If I can catch these Harriers when they're pulling back up, it's going to be very easy. And remember the AIM-9D has a very, very long burn time, which means that you can get some phenomenal ranges out of these missiles. What I'm going to do here is potentially look for a Harrier that's turning, and this Harrier is a perfect victim, or not quite. So we're going to sort of carry on a little bit more and try and get him into a uh, precarious situation, which he's just put himself in by going into a vertical. So we are dodging ourselves a missile at the same time by rolling over Harrier GR1. That's a pretty impressive dodge, to be honest, from, a, uh, from an SRAM. So after sort of figuring out that issue, we're going to have a look at this AV-8 leading the missile of course and if, because it has such a long burn time it is going to strike very very easy it's going to be still still burning by the time it reaches the target and that's the bonus of these missiles you do have to keep in mind though that these things do turn better when they are not burning because they're not under so much speed that they compress i guess uh, and for, for you to realize that and to make the most of these missiles, you kind of have to fire at about a three kilometer range to sort of expire the, uh, the, the missile as such. But in that, that sort of sense, you, you don't really need to do that. You can pretty much just pick a slow target. 800 kilometers per hour is plenty slow. And of course, if a phantom to so decides he wants to turn in front of you, then by all means, they can do exactly that. Once you switch that afterburner off, there's there's nothing they can do. It's pretty much done deal. And as soon as you switch that afterburner on, put it in a straight line and make sure you lift up your flaps, it's pretty much done deal. 
there's not a lot that the enemy can do. Uh, I will say F5s are quite deadly. Uh, you do have to make sure that you don't get yourself into a low speed fight with an F5. Uh, but apart from that, you can potentially energy fight this thing till your heart's content. And you can certainly accelerate away from it in a climb. The uh, F5 is a fairly strong competitor. I would say that it is a sort of more turn fighty version of this thing, uh, minus the acceleration and of course with worse missiles. Uh, this plane is actually really, really good once you get the hang of the plane. You, you can't be turning above about 800 kilometers per hour. Uh, that's sort of where you start to lose your ability to turn, just because of the wings being so fragile. In fact, it seems like the wings are so fragile that you can't even keep ordnance on the wings. Uh, that might just be because the wings are tilting. Um, I'm not entirely sure where this comes from, because uh, I guess maybe the, the tilting mechanism makes the wings a little bit more fragile. I'm not really sure. Maybe you could let me know in the comments section below. So, with that match done, a uh, pretty easy ace to be honest out of all of that. We're going to move on to this match. Now this is probably the best match of Air RB I've ever played, ever. Uh, and that's saying a lot because I have a fair few thousand hours in this game uh, and about 35 to 40,000 matches in War Thunder total. This takes the cake for being the best match that I've ever played. It is uh, among the highest kill count, and it is certainly the highest kill count of any jet that I've ever played in. I've, I've gotten plenty of six kill games in uh, things like the MiG-21, but I've never ever gotten a, uh, a match quite like this. And I'll save it for a little bit later, so no spoilers. But we're going to sort of try and dig into our opponents as soon as possible. Now, this plane is considered to be the last gunfighter. That being said, that meaning uh, its purpose or its theoretical purpose was to uh, shoot down enemies with its guns. But uh, apparently in its real service life, it only got about, I think it was 15% of its kills with guns. And most of them were with missiles. So, uh, yeah, not, not exactly a gunfighter, but certainly where it is designed to do gunfighting it is very, very good. So, quick head on there with the F5C. I'm getting a little bit of scratching while I, uh, while I'm like panning through this video. So if you guys are noticing that, let me know. Uh, it could just be some warth undecided issues with um, some maybe shadow play or something like that. But um, maybe I can get that figured out. I've also noticed that War Thunder has a couple of uh, performance-based issues lately, particularly around uh, sort of the Ampere GPUs, the uh, RTX 3000s, um, and because, you know, I'm not buying one just yet. I'd like to. I'd definitely like to buy one. Um, I don't, unfortunately, have one of those, but uh, you're stuck on a GTX 1070. I, I say stuck on. It's pretty good, but... Um, for those of you who are experiencing issues, it's likely down to the uh, the, the War Thunder game engine because Gaijin, Gaijin's great most of the time. No uh, no hard feelings, but it certainly is a little bit frustrating. Now, it's still not as frustrating as losing a uh, an AIM 9D to uh, a little bit of a harsh angle there, trying to be a little bit too ambitious there with my missiles. Of course, it you can't do it all the time, and you won't get all your missiles. And you can see here, I'm very, very careful with my turning. I'm getting the extreme overload warning, and I'm just putting in a little bit of negative G just to sort of uh, reset that warning. It sort of works on a timer. It's like if you just pull insane amount of Gs for a long time, then that's when it pulls the uh, the wings apart. But if you reset it a little bit with a bit of neg G, it normally comes out okay. MiG-21 bis there, straight the head on, not taking it at all. And the F4 as well, doing that sort of not a head on weird thing, uh, sort of forcing me to uh, maybe find a contingency plan here. This is looking like a pretty hairy situation. The F4E here is a bit stupid and decides to go for a turn with a Crusader. Very dumb indeed. And now I am left with a MiG-21 BIS. The MiG-21 BIS can uh, outturn me if I'm not careful, but if I can manage my speed well and if I can sort of try and sit behind him, use that sort of wing loading, if you will, that ability to just sort of pull lift out of nowhere, then it should be fine. I've got an AIM-9D prepped, and that's exactly what will be the best to finish this MiG-21 BIS off. And uh, it misses. Unfortunately, because flares are a thing, and the 9Ds are very, very sensitive to flares. So I'm just going to do what Crusader does best and be a uh, missile fighter. Perhaps? Yes. Of course I am. Uh, if I can get a short-range missile like that, it is very, very good. Uh, it, you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want if you get those short-range missiles, because flares don't do anything. But you know what else doesn't do anything? An SU-17 in a vertical dogfight. This thing pulls so much energy, and the SU-17 had so much speed coming into that fight that it wasn't even worth it. He probably should have just kept it going with a bit more speed and maybe slowly worked down that dogfight. I guess if he had his wings out all the way at a low speed, 
you could have potentially come out on top, but unfortunately, you just sort of blazed through it with the auto wing sweep function, and uh, it really didn't end up quite well. So, I'm a little bit low on fuel, I'm low on ammo, I have no more missiles left, and the situation is looking increasingly dire. There's an F5 in front of me going for the head-on, an F4F, which is extremely dangerous, and of course, another F5 sitting around that low altitude area. I need to get back to base, I just need to book it back to base, otherwise I'm not going to make it. If I try and stick it out for a dogfight, I am basically going to cook myself, and I'm going to uh, force my teammate there in the F4E, to uh, surrender the whole match, basically, because I'm not really sure that he could take it four versus one. That would be a bit of a stretch. So, the uh, F, the the other friendly there, unfortunately, uh, didn't make it. So it's just me and this F4E. I'm trying very hard to sort of communicate with him to see if we can pull through this. What I want him to do is try and travel either across, so uh, laterally, left to right, toward uh, relative to me or in uh, a better sort of situation, traveling away from me, giving the chasing MiG-21 his afterburner straight. And uh, unfortunately, this is not what's happened. The MiG-21 is uh, basically heading straight towards me. I have to go for a quick head-on, and it's an SMT. Just double-checking that it's an SMT and not a BIS. So we're now in a bit of a situation here. The F4E has uh, died, and now I am the only ally left. The MiG-21 is not going to get a missile here just because he, either the warm-up times or uh, a combination of warm-up times and that harsh angle. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm uh, going into a fairly harsh dogfight with this MiG-21 and I'm going to try and pull some energy here, uh, try and keep up with the MiG-21's uh, sort of delta wing design or that sort of weird little, little danger triangle. So. The MiG-21 has overshot his mark here. They are heavier than the MF variants, simply because they just don't have the uh, the fuel spine. But the MF and the SMT are very, very comparable in their uh, turn rates. However, if you can manage your throttle well, manage your air brake, your flaps and stuff like that, the SMT is really no match, especially on a full fuel load and with plenty of missiles. You are really not going to do much. That last gunfighter, the gunfighter bit, really does come into play. So speaking of gunfighter, the F4F here almost uh, throws me into the ground and keeps going in a straight line, blazing with those 20 mils. So I'm going to see if I can fire a uh, 9D and try and get him to co come on, come for a little, little, little cheeky dogfight. Come and fight in my territory, and that's kind of what the F4F does for a little bit of a second. And I've got to keep my head on a swivel here because the F5C could potentially come out of nowhere. I really don't want to be caught out, and I need to make those last two kills. These are our only two enemies left, F4F and F5C. The F4F is heading towards the sun, which is not good for me because I really want to get one of those 9Ds off on him. And uh, I need to keep an eye out again for that F5C. The F5C is one of those planes that can ruin me and uh, slow me down to the point where the F4F will just sort of finish me off, making it extremely easy. So what I'm going to do here, I know I'm closing the distance, but I am going to send a 9D his way just to try and get him to turn, and that's kind of what's happened here. I've managed to sort of just make him turn in front of me, and he's at about 900 meters, and I need to spray as soon as he gets in nice and close. I do have to keep my eye on the minimap for that F5C as well. So I'm spraying away here, trying to get a go, and the supersonic cloud is not helping. Plus, this plane does like to uh, pitch up a little bit. Now, I do hear or see something, I think, and it turns out it is just on time. The F-5 has fired a missile. I can't remember if it's an F-5E or an F-5C, and so I treat it as if it's an F-5E. The uh, F-5E has the 9Js, and so I just want to make sure that I get that 5km distance away from the, uh, from the F-5 and then I will sort of strike. Now, I need to keep an eye on him, and it looks like he's come right down upon me. I need to make sure I don't rip my wings, going up into that vertical, killing the afterburner, just to bleed a little bit more speed, and then maybe turn this into a bit of an energy fight. I'm going right underneath, just as the F5 goes around, and the F4F is looking like he's going to smash himself into the ground at this rate, very, very close to the ground, and of course, he definitely smashes himself into the ground. We're at seven kills. I have never, ever reached seven kills before. Can we make it eight? Can we pull this clutch? This is uh, it's pretty incredible. My heart was in my mouth here, and that never, ever happens with War Thunder. I'm normally pretty chill, and uh, you know, either chill or salty, no in-between, but... Um, my god, this is 
very, very tense. I'm going to try and sort of coerce him into a low-speed dogfight, see if I can get him to waste some utility, or alternatively get him to put it, pull himself into a turn. The F5 goes for the turn, and uh, just, just avoids that missile. But of course, having to pull up there leaves him very, very stuck. No energy, no speed, and the F5C, unfortunately, makes it uh, into the dirt. This thing, perfectly fucking capable at 11.0 perfectly capable at pretty much any BR you put it at. Screw it. Put it up against the F-35 and I can guarantee you the F-8 will do well. Throw aim 9 xs on it and you're going to have a wonderful time. This plane could pretty much go anywhere. It's just got the stuff. It's just got something about it that just makes it so goddamn capable. And in the right hands, with the right sort of experience, you, you can go anywhere with this plane. I have such high opinions on this plane. I would recommend everyone grind it out. If you can, grind it out and uh, enjoy it because it is absolutely goddamn fantastic. So ladies and gents, that is the F8 Crusader. Let me know in the comments section what you think about this plane. Have I, have I been fair enough? Have I been biased? Because this plane has given me quite a lot of joy. It's, it's been a very, very fun plane to play. Um, that being said, I do want to uh, sort of talk about a couple of other things before I finish the video off. First one is the computer. Uh, as you can see, there's no lighting coming from like the top here, and that's because the RGB on the fans have died. Now, I'm not exactly someone who's a massive like RGB snob, or I'm like obsessed with RGB, but when I do something, I want to do it properly, and unfortunately, because the, the lighting has died, I'm going to send it for a warranty. Now, I have noticed that there are a couple of really good uh, closed loop liquid coolers on the market and I still want to go with an AIO. I think uh, for a 5950X overclocked by 1.1 gig it's uh, it, it needs the cooling capacity and this thing runs quite quietly as well uh, which is extremely important for recording. I think the ability to uh, sort of take heat from that very very powerful CPU uh, is really important to me so I'm looking for a couple of recommendations. If you guys want to sort of suggest something. I'm not really interested in air cooling. I know it's a, a good idea um, and it's very cheap and very reliable, but I am looking more for something that will sort of allow me to keep that 1.1 gigahertz overclock um, just to sort of try and run the uh, CPU. The EK AIO has so far done oh, fantastically. Um, I'm just a little bit sort of, uh, I'm not a real big fan of the, the look. I sort of bought it for the performance um, and was like, oh yeah, the uh, color is secondary. Now, EK is actually coming out with its own, um, uh, like another version of its 360 AIO. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like 80 Australian dollars more. Um, I, can, I can buy it, it's not a problem, but it's potentially looking better. The only problem is it is coming out in October. So between now and then, I have a bit of a decision to make. Do I wanna go with a full custom water cooling setup. Uh, not for the GTX 1070, but definitely if I were to go to like an RTX 3080 or an RTX 3090, uh, what would I potentially need to consider? Like I've done a bit of research on water cooling. I think I'll need uh, like a 360 and a 240 rad. Um, I kind of want to stick with like Lian Li Uni fans. I, I like the concept of them, um, but for the most part, just let me know your thoughts. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a bit of an exciting trip. Now, I also wanted to talk about one other thing that has happened in the War Thunder community specifically over the last week and a half. Uh, there's been a content creator who's taken his own life, unfortunately, and this is this is a bit of a shock, to be honest. Uh, I wouldn't expect someone to actually go and do that. Um, you would think that maybe with the support network around them, it would be uh, a lot easier to sort of get some help, but of course, with these sort of situations, it's always a little bit more like, well, I never really saw this coming type thing. So uh, it, it is really upsetting and it is difficult to get through, especially for those of you who watched this content creator. Um, I am absolutely gobsmacked. I, I can't believe it. But uh, for those of you who want to know if you can actually do something, I think the best thing that you can do is send someone a message. So if, if you know that someone is in a bit of a bad spot, if you know that someone is not doing so well, send them a message and uh, you know give them a leg up. Tell them to keep their head up and tell them to put that crown back on their head because it's, 
it's a shit world out there. But uh, I tell you what, it it doesn't get easier. You just sort of learn to to manage it, and that learning to manage life is is really difficult. And and sort of learning the process is is really challenging. And so a lot of people often feel lost or uh, they sort of feel like they can't do it. But just let them know that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and know that light at the end of the tunnel is not another train. It's, uh, it's, actually, a, it's actually a nice meadow. So just, uh, yeah, kiss your homies goodnight because you, you never know when you're never going to see them again. It's, uh, it's fucking awful, man. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your input, your advice. Talk to your homies, and I'll catch you next time.